Hi, I am Sagar, your instructor for this course with experience in designing and developing several software projects. The topics presented in this course are really life changers for me because only after learning these topics, I was able to successfully execute several server side applications. And if you are looking to be a server side application developer, these topics are a must learn for you because you need to first of all understand how the data is transferred on the wire and also what happens when I type www.google.com on a web browser. So you need to understand that. So how that data transfer happens, what is the protocol used and so many things in detail and this is what is covered in this course. Before you can understand how socket communication happens, you need to know a bit more details about how a message is transferred from one application to another application which resides in dif two different machines. Let us say how a message is transferred. Now let us say that the application running under port 82 of this machine like to send a message to application running under port 92 of this machine. Now let us say this message need to be transferred from here to here. You need to understand how this message is translated and sent on the wire to the destination so that it can reach this application. Now in order to send a message, you need to utilize some communication protocol. Either it is a TCP IP or it is UDP IP. But there are several applications which run under the same protocol. Now how a particular application is identified? and that is done using a 16 bit port number and this port number may be assigned by the application or it may be requested. Now let us say that there are three applications here which are running under port 81, 82 and 83 respectively. Now let us say that this particular application's port number is 82. Now let us see how the message is translated. Now let us assume that this message need to be given to application under running under port 92 of a different machine. Now let us assume that the TCP handler is going to add some additional header and that indicates from where what is the source port number of the message and what is the destination port number. Now when this message is submitted to the IP layer, now what this is going to add is it is going to say that this protocol from which the message is obtained is from TCP and the source IP of this machine and the destination IP of this machine. Now when this message is submitted to the Ethernet layer, now this addition adds an additional header that indicates the frame type is IP and the source Ethernet card address of this machine and the destination Ether Ethernet card address. This destination Ethernet card address is a variable which might be the next router Ethernet card address and then from there on it is translated till it reaches the last router which can recognize this interface. And this message is transferred on the wire to the destination which sees that whether the Ethernet card address matches and it is going to pass on this message part to the IP layer indicating because it is indicated that the frame type is IP. Now IP looks at the destination IP address and sees okay this is the message destinated to this machine and hence it passes on this information to the TCP layer and this is because the protocol is TCP. Now the TP, TCP layer sees that this message destination is 92 which is the application running under port 92 and hence it passes on the message to the application port 92, running under port 92. So the importance of port number here is there are multiple applications which run under the same protocol and the port number enables the protocol handler to identify to which application uh, the message belongs to. Now that you know what is a port number and how a message is transferred between applications, let us get started with some client server programming using TCP IP. So Java abstracts a lot of things and gives you a simplified programming model which enables you to write the code very easily. Now let us see what it does 
and how what are the what is the terminology associated with that here in the client server programming model you can think about server application as a main application with ip and port number published to the clients where clients can use that port number and get connected with the server and communicate now here the main port number which we call as a server socket so server socket is the one which accepts the client connections and here the port number could be requested by the application say for example we have a program which accepts or which listens to 9999 port now assume that the client knows this ip and port number then client will actually create a socket and they will send a connect request to this server port once the connection is established a separate socket is created which is used for communication and this may be something which is available port number or whatever is the next available port number and this port number is communicated with the client and this is the port using which client can start communicating with the server now you may have a question why this is a different port number why not 9999 and this is because because the server socket is released from client now it can accept another client request using the same port without which this port will be blocked and you won't be able to service multiple clients in that scenario in order to not to block the server port number a separate port is created and this port is used for communication purpose now let's see how the communication happens between these two once java creates a socket object you can find two streams within that socket one is input stream and the other you can think of it as an output stream and the reverse way here the same case one is output stream and the other is input stream now what you can imagine is whatever you read from the input stream this will be obtained from the server output stream and whatever you write to the output stream is an input to the server input stream now let's see how to code this now here i have created a new java project i'll start with the server code let's say a new class and say it is a server and i'm keeping the main method as well the first thing what you need to do is to actually request for a port server port and for that you need to use the class called server socket say server socket and new server socket and here you can request for any port number so whatever you want let's say 9999 now if the port is available then the object will be created otherwise you will see an exception now import the class and also you need to throw an io exception because the port might not be available so i'm just throwing an exception here to make it simple once you created the socket now we need to wait for clients and for that you have a method called accept server socket dot accept the accept method waits for the clients once the client is arrived it creates a separate socket now using this socket we can start interacting with the client and the socket has two streams input stream new socket dot get input stream and output stream socket dot get output stream now as you can see here whatever you read from the input stream it is what is sent by the client and whatever is written to the output stream is what is sent to the client i need to import these two classes as well now for this example sake let's say we will first read whatever is sent by the client and then we will send out a hello message let's create a small buffer where new byte array of some 1024 and let's say read into that buffer so we are just waiting for client to send some message let's display what it is 
is saved from client new string of buffer and also let's trim the unnecessary characters this is because they may not be entire 1024 characters sent now now let's write whatever we want to write let's say out dot write hello from server dot get bytes now once done let's close the socket and let's close the server socket as well now in this example we first created the server socket with port 9999 this means that this port is allocated for this application and now whenever we call accept we are waiting on this port for the client once client arrives it creates a separate socket which is used for communication now this socket has two streams input stream and output stream input stream is used to read the data sent by the client and output stream is used to write the data now in this example we are waiting for client to send some message and later we send the hello message to the client and then we close the sockets we will further refine these examples but let's take this as our first example and let's also create a client program let's say a new class client and here what we need to do is we need to first create a socket new socket and you need to know the IP address of the machine where the server program is running and from uh, example standpoint let's say it because it is running in the same machine I can use the local host and the port number of the server machine which is 9999 let's import the class and also if the connection could not be established it will throw an exception so let's throw this exception as well and then now once the connection is established you will get a socket uh, which can be used for communication now again the reverse side of it now let's say take input stream equal to socket dot get input stream and this is used to read the data sent by the server and output stream socket dot get output stream which is used to write some data to the server let's import those classes and now we have earlier written that first client should send the message and then server will send the message back so first step would be to send a message to the client hello from client let's say hello from client dot get bytes you need to send it in the form of bytes because it is output stream and now we can wait for response from the server so we can say byte array of some 1024 and then wait for server to send the response now once received and say received from server create a string from the response bytes and trim out all unnecessary spaces then close the socket that's it it's a very simple client server application now here the client is sending the hello from client message and the server and the server will send hello from server message now first thing is you need to run the server application first so that we can open a socket and wait for clients now let's say java application if the console is not seen let's see the console now here it we didn't print any messages here but still the server is actually running and it is waiting for messages now let's close and put some proper message for now let's say waiting for client 
say client connected. Now let's see. Now we are waiting for client. Now run the client program. And here also let's put some proper messages connected to server. You can see connected to server and the client received hello from server. And also when you see the other side of it, go to the server server application. Now you can see that client connected and received hello from client. This is a simple plain uh, sample application that exchanges the hello message. Now first thing is the key elements here are you create a server application, open a port for clients to connect and then call the way accept method on the socket so that we can wait for the client and once the client arrives, so a socket gets created and using the socket's input stream and output stream, you can exchange information between client and server. And here in this example, we are only accepting only one single client. We will further refine and see how we can accept multiple clients. Now let's build a small code server that gives the product price for the given product. Now here I am keeping all the classes within the same Java file to make it easy for you to understand. Now when you are building, you can create a separate package and then put the classes in the respective packages. And also I am keeping all the client and server code which as part of the same project. You can create a separate project if you want. Now let's start building it. Now. Let's create a server socket and request for port 999. We need to import the class and also we need to throw an exception. Let's throw the exception here. Yeah. And uh, start with placing proper messages. Listening to 999. That's fine. Now we need to wait for client. Or let's say socket server socket dot accept. Now when we call accept, it waits for client to connect. Once the request is obtained, it creates a socket and we can further use the socket to communicate. Now let's import this class. Now this I want to do it as part of a loop which is an infinite loop, so that we can accept multiple clients. Now here I'll say waiting for client. Now in order to receive the data, we need input stream and to send the data, we need output stream. So let's say input stream in equal to socket dot get input stream. And also output stream out equal to socket dot get output stream. Let's import these two. So let us take the uh, product name here. Let's say request, I would say new byte array of some hundred and say in dot read. So before that, let's print a message saying waiting for product information from the client. Now, so what is the product? New string of the request and then remove the unnecessary characters. You can say that received received product name and the product. Now we received the product name. Let's get the price. For that, let's write a small uh, utility class. Let's say code service, and which is having a map of product info and say hash map of 
string comma string and import those classes and as part of the constructor let's initialize this it's a dummy one so just need to add some dummy product information put some a 100 product info dot put some b and then let's say 200 now that is fine and string get code for product now in this case let's return for dot get and product so now use this service to actually get the code information so for that i'll say let's create a small product service object new code service and now use the code service to get the price price equal to code service dot get code for the given product if price equal to null we can say that price equal to something invalid product let's not worry about efficiency factors here now we need to send this price information back to the client let's say out dot write price dot get bytes and then let's close the socket now we should not close the server socket here so server socket is only closed only at the end of the loop because we kept it in an infinite loop it is not closed anytime now let's see what we have written here here we created a small code service and then we created a server socket at port 9999 so this server socket enables us to accept the client request now we're calling the accept method and waiting for client once client connection is obtained now we are using the input stream to read the product information and we are uh, extracting the quotation for that particular product and then we are writing the response back to the output stream which is given back to the client and then this socket connection is closed and the client connection is closed and again we will go back to the loop and then wait for the next client request now this is fine so once this is done let's also put response sent So the let's write the other side of it that is the client let's say new class make it client say this is the client and then the first thing is we need to connect to the server so socket we are creating a new socket object and 127.0.0.1 also we can say this is localhost which is called a loopback address so the request won't go to the external network so the request comes back to the same machine because server is also running in the same machine and what is the port number of the server that is 999 so once the connection is established we need to import the classes so once the connection is established now we need to send the product information to the server in order to get the code let's say product equal to a and again take the input stream and output stream up from the socket socket dot get input stream and output stream socket dot get output stream import those classes once done send the product information product dot get bytes so once written now you need to wait for response from the server let's say response equal to new byte array of 1024 or 100 whatever it is and in dot read the response 
once done response equal to new string of response and it remove all un unwanted characters obtained response is and let's print the response and you can close the connection now let's print proper messages here so let's say connected to the server and then sending product information and obtain response that's fine now let's run this code and see how the communication happens first you need to start the server application so let's say server and then a nice java application now we started listening to the uh, port 9999 and we are we're now waiting for the client and now go to the client.java and run this application now you can see that here client connection established and we are waiting for product information from the client and we received the product name is a and the response sent again waiting for the client because we kept that in a loop and then hence it continuously accepts multiple clients but there is a there is a problem with this we will come to know what it is and from the client side if you look at it so is connected to the server sending the product information and obtained the response is 100 now let's let's send something which is non existing let's say some value now run the client now you can see that sending product information and we received invalid product now this example has shown you how to accept multiple clients in a sequential manner so it is almost a single threaded uh, example so we are accepting one client at a time and we are servicing the client only after servicing the client you are accepting the next client we will refine this further in the next example as we have seen earlier so this is a single threaded client server that is fine but i did mention about a problem associated with that one now let's see what the problem is because the server is single threaded and it is accepting one client at a time so assume that if a client is blocked what happens yes if a client is blocked automatically server is also blocked and this is the problem let's see that in action there now let me slightly modify this client code i'll say connecting to the server and if connected i would like to accept this product from the command line and for that i would say enter product name and in order to read let's create a scanner object say new scanner and connect it with standard input stream now that's fine now instead of uh, initializing the product see scan dot next line now the only adjustment we made is we are now accepting the product from the command line now let's see what happens so to run this program let's begin the server first now show view and console i can see we started listening to the port 9999 and now we are waiting for the client let's go to the client program and now run as and java application now connecting to the server we got connected and we are waiting for product name let us say that the product name is a and now you obtain the response and the response is 100 this is absolutely fine now run the client again but here let's not enter the product name now this particular client is blocked that means we connected with the server and now we are not entering the product details 
that means server is waiting for the client to send the product details here. Now, because we are not sending, let us see what happens. Let us say we run this program again. Now, this is a different client. Now, enter the product name, let us say B. And now you can see that the server is not accepting this request because we send the information, the other client is ready, but still because the other client is blocked. Now, in this case, this client has blocked the server. And because of that, server is not able to accept the next client. And this is the problem. When a client is serviced through a single thread, if a client is blocked, server is also blocked. Now, what if this client enters some information? Let's say A. Now, oh, this client got the response. And you can see the other client also got the response because now the server was released. How to solve this kind of problem? Because a server cannot accept one client at a time, that is not a good idea. Server is supposed to accept multiple clients. Let us see how to solve this problem. Now, let us see how we can transform this example and uh, see how we can service multiple clients in parallel. And in order to service multiple clients in parallel, we need to associate each client request with a separate thread so that if a client is blocked, the corresponding thread is blocked and not the server. Now, for that, we should not be writing this code here. And instead, we should create a new thread to service this client. So, how can we do that? Let us say we have a class called some service thread. And in order to make it simple, I am just extending the thread class here. So, my, the purpose of this example too is to explain you how you can transform uh, the application into a multi-threaded application. But there are several efficiency factors that need to be considered which I feel you yourself can take care of. Now, as you know, the entry point for the thread execution is the run method. And now, this is the thread responsible to service the client request. And for that, uh, I would say, we need to supply the socket which this thread need to communicate and let us communicate that, let us supply that socket through the constructor. Now, when you start the thread, you should use this socket to communicate with the client. Now, instead of servicing the client here, let us create a thread and assign it the socket and start it. So, what you are doing here is starting a thread which will service the client. Now, whatever the functionality that we had here earlier, we should move it to this block, the run method. Now, what we are doing here is because we cannot throw any exceptions from the run method, we will catch Let's not worry about that. So, one more uh, additional thing that ne it needs is it needs to have this code service. Although we should be writing it in a separate components, but to make it simple, I kept the code here. Now, see what you did. Now, you created a server socket and you started listening to port 9999. Now, once the client arrives, we are creating a separate thread and then we started servicing that client using that thread. Now, this way, you are not blocking the server. Now, inside the thread, now we are accepting the product information and then we are responding with the corresponding price info and then we are closing the socket. And let us see what happens if the client is blocked in this scenario. 
Now let's say start the server application now and get the console. Now we started uh, listening to port 9999. We are still waiting for the client to come. Now uh, inside the client application, now uh, let's enter the product name for the first time. And you can see we got the response back. This is fine. And when you look at the server, and we can see that the server is waiting for the client. And once the client arrives, it created a separate thread and it started servicing the client using that thread. Now let us see what happens if the client is blocked. Run the client application. Now here we are not entering the product details. So this client is blocked. Now see what happens when other clients started uh, requesting it. So this is the other client. Now let us say that we are entering the details. Now you can see that this client is not blocked. And this is because this client is serviced using a separate thread. Now here the point to note is the thread that is assigned to this client is blocked. When you enter the information, so the corresponding client is also serviced. Now this is how you can visualize the problem. Now this particular server is actually listening to 9999 with a separate thread. Let's say that this is the thread which is actually listening to this port. When this client arrives, so it, they may, will make a request to this port and upon receiving the request, a separate socket is associated with this client. And now what we are trying to do is, instead of servicing the client using the same thread, we are creating a separate thread and associating that with this client. That way we are not blocking this thread. And still we can receive another request using this thread. And once you associate that other client with the socket, you can, also, you can create a separate thread and you can start servicing the client using a separate thread. So this way you are parallelly responding to multiple clients. And also let's assume that if this client is blocked, then the corresponding thread which is assigned, it is blocked but not the entire server. The efficient way to solve this kind of problem would be to not to create a separate thread for each request, each client request. Instead you can create a pool of threads and service the client through the available thread. And a hint would be to use some sort of executor service and create a runnable tasks and assign the tasks to the thread instead of you yourself creating individual threads. So up to now what you learned is a socket communication which, is, uh, which comes under TCP IP protocol. Now for TCP IP protocol, it is a connection oriented protocol. So in order to exchange the information, you first need to establish the connection and then you can exchange the information. But in case of UDP protocol, it is not connection oriented, it is connectionless. But still you need a socket, that means you need uh, an endpoint to send the information to, but it is not connection oriented. Here what you normally do is to create a datagram packet and you can send it from one point to another point. Now here there is no dedicated connection. So if you want to relate it in real time, you can consider TCP IP as a telephonic conversation where you need to first establish a connection and then you can start exchanging information. But you can think of a datagram packet as a sim uh, simple postal envelope where you write the two address and then you can post it. Or maybe an SMS where you will uh, type the SMS and you will send it to the destination. So it's, a, it's a general reference. So let's see how we can code for UDP. Oh, this is not actually a client server application, but still I'll use the terminology for server and client where server application is the one which opens a datagram socket and publishes it to the clients. And client use uh, the socket to uh, send the, some packets to the server. Now here, uh, let's say we are going to create a class called server. And the ob socket object that you need to create is datagram socket. 
let's say this is sock now datagram socket and when you are creating a datagram socket you ask for some port number let's say 8989 now import those classes and also we need to throw an exception let's let's not catch it now we created a datagram socket and we used the port 8989 and now let's wait for some packet from the client now in order to receive the packet you first need to create a packet which acts as a buffer to take the content now datagram packet let's say datagram packet this is the packet which is used to receive the content new datagram packet and let's create a buffer say new byte array of some thousand and the length is thousand now we created a datagram packet here this is not for sending this is for receiving the packet and this is socket dot receive the packet now here whenever a packet is received that is copied on to this packet so that we can read the information from this packet now once the packet is received let's print what is that we got i'm going to create a string from the given packet dot get data so get data is a byte array so i'm converting it to a string and then it is obtained from ip now we do have this information within the packet which can be used to send the reply back if at all needed and then obtain from port packet dot get port just like when you receive an sms you will also see the from address so that you can reply back if you want now that's it so we just we obtain the packet and then we will close the socket so this is one side of it now let's create the other side of it let's create a new class client now in order to send or receive we need a datagram socket let's create a datagram socket and datagram socket here we need not mention the port number so if you are specific about port number you can mention it otherwise you can leave it so that whatever is the next available port it will be assigned to you now and also throw an exception now that's fine so the message that you want to send is hello from so and so now this should be converted to bytes and hence byte array the data part is message dot get bytes now we need to send this information to the server so for that you need to create a datagram packet new datagram packet and what is that you want to send that is the data and what is the length of the content data dot length to whom you want to send inet address dot get local host so the machine uh, the current machine itself so that you are not actually interacting with any external machine if you know the ip then you can mention it here and do you know the port of the server so it is 8989 so 8989 import it and also send this now we created the packet and just we need to this is sock dot send the packet that's all so we created a datagram packet with the data and you mentioned the length of the data and to whom you want to send the ip and the port number so that is the application that is running under udp protocol and under udp port 8989 
and once you send the packet so the other side of its server will receive the packet and it can look at the information and see from where it obtained the packet now if you are not closing the socket connection you can still use this information to send some reply back or maybe you can create a protocol on your own to send out an acknowledgement and so on now let's see how to run this now let's run the server application first now we are waiting for packet so the application is not closed as you can see here now from the client just run the client application now because we didn't print anything here so the application is closed the packet was sent now you can see in the server console received the data and it received it from this ip and this port number now you can also do the reversal of it now you can also use the ip address and port number obtained from the packet and send the information back and for that scenario you might have to write the send logic here and the receive logic here now let's understand what is hypertext transfer protocol and this is the protocol which is being used when you type some uh, url in the web browser and see what happens and how the request is submitted to the server now in this case we have a simple url here now here the parts different parts of the url include the scheme and followed by the ip address or the dns name and then the port number so if you ignore the port number by default for http it is port 80 and for https this is port 443 and then uh, followed by the uri or the path information now in this scenario what happens is a simple plain tcp ip connection is established with the server running inside this machine and listening to port 8080 once a tcp ip connection is established now a http request is sent to the server now inside the http request because you didn't mention any method the default request method is get and the uri that you are requesting is slash abc dot txt and followed by some http protocol information and then followed by other additional http headers and there will be a break line and a request body so that includes any other details if needed so because of a get request because this is a get request there will be no http body so this is the http request which will be submitted to the server and upon reading this request it will look for what is the uri being requested and based on that it will take up an action now when sending the response again the response includes two parts one is the protocol information and then followed by the response code let's say if it is accepted then you will see a response code 200 and followed by some sort of description and again additional headers such as the type of content that that is being served and then followed by the content length and other headers and this headers is followed by a break line and followed by the actual content and this is how a http interaction happens once the response is sent the connection is closed and that itself ends the communication and hence http is what we call a stateless protocol that is because each time when a request is submitted it is treated as a new request and the re once the res response is submitted back so the connection is closed and server forgets about it to make it stateful some session information will be maintained so what that you will come to know when you understand the server side applications now let's see how the request and response interaction happens on the wire through an example here i have written a small utility program that listens to port 8000 and this is a tcp ip socket 
so which is listening to port 8000 and this utility program will continuously read for request and it will send a small response now here we are waiting for connection to be established and once it is established we are reading the request this is a small utility which actually reads the input stream and see what is the request obtained and once you get the request it, it will be printed and then we are sending a small response and that response includes the first response header which include which states that your request is accepted and the type of content being served is text slash html and then followed by a break line and followed by some simple html that sends welcome as response now let's see what happens here let's run this application and here it is a simple utility that dumps whatever the request that comes now let's open the browser application now and let's type http followed by the ip address which is localhost and 8000 and click on it and see what happens you can see that the browser received a response that is welcome and that is because we sent a http response code 200 and we said the content type is html and then the actual html content but see what is the request which was obtained now we received a simple http get request with ura slash because we didn't mention anything here we got this slash and then followed by protocol and the other header details that include some information about the browser now what happens when i ask for a particular request let's clean this up here now let's ask for a particular request say some abc.txt now you can see that we received a get request with the for the resource slash abc.txt and this is the other header details this other favorite icon request which is sent by the browser in order to get the icon so we don't uh, we need not worry about this one for now so this is the http get request which is obtained over a simple plain tcp ip connection now if i say something else like abc slash xyz slash pqr dot txt now again you can see that we receive a get request for slash abc xyz and pqr dot txt so this is how http works browser initially establishes a tcp ip connection and sends a request to the server which is framed using the protocol http and the request is serviced by the server and in response we will again receive a http response that includes http headers response headers and followed by a break line and followed by actual content of the response now there are few other http request formats that we need to consider now here is a small uh, simple html page that demonstrates what are the different uh, types of requests that you can send now the first form is actually submitting uh, the request to slash abc and here i'm also including the text field to see how the data is also transferred and a simple submit button now when you click this button the request a get request will be submitted to this url along with the data now in case of second uh, request second form you will see uh, you can see that the method is post and hence a post request is submitted and in case of the third form this is a multi part request where your attachment uh, what is uploaded is also sent now let's see what happens in this scenario now let's run this small html using chrome and this first line actually demonstrates uh, the get request second line demonstrates post and third line demonstrates the post with multi part i'm saying let's say the name is sagar and then click now a request is submitted to this url 
and you can see at the end of the URL, the request parameter is also added along with the value. And this is how get request is submitted. The URL, the form data is also included as part of the header itself. Now let's see what is the request which is obtained. Now you can see that a get request is obtained with URL slash ABC and followed by so name equal to Sagar. So this is a simple plain get request with the data. Now what happens when the data, when the request method is post? Let's see that. Uh, in this scenario, let's say I'm going to again type Sagar and click. Now with this has submitted the post request. You can see that there is no data appended to the URL. So how the data is received by the server? You can see this is a post request and the URI is slash ABC and this is the request header and you can see that it is followed by a break line and then followed by the form data so which is name equal to saga here the name is actually the name text box and along with its value so in case of post request request parameters are submitted in the request body whereas in case of get request the parameters are added to the url itself so whenever you are submitting the data you should normally use post request because there is a limit on the amount of data that you can add to the header. When once this header length crosses, it will fail. And you need to see how a form data multi-part request is submitted. So here you need to observe that the form encoding is multi-part form data. So which is actually used for attachments. Whenever you are uploading some file, how a request is submitted. Let's see what happens here. I'm saying the name is Sagar. This is a plain form field. And also I'm going to select some file and now submit the request. Now see what happens here. In this case, a post request is submitted and for the with the URI slash ABC, and this is actually a multi-part form data request and that is actually separated by this boundary. So each part of this request is separated by a boundary. You can see that the same boundary is indicated here. Now this is a small uh, plain form data field with parameter name and this its value is Sagar. And again you can see a separator. This indicates that this part ends and the second part indicates uh, the file name, the name of the parameter is attachment because that is what you have given here. And then it is the actual file name which is uploaded is a.txt and the type of content is text slash plain. And this is the actual content of the file. And then again, it is separated by the separator, which you can see it in the boundary field here. And you can see that it is now followed by two hyphens which indicates that that is the end of the request. And this is how multi-part request is submitted. So from the viewpoint of the server, you need to understand how to read this request and how to extract the information from it and how to respond to the client. Here is a small HTTP server example that sends the requested resources back to the client. Now we have a resources folder here where there are three resources, a.txt, b.txt and index.html. Let us go through the code now. Now here we created a server socket and listening to port 8000. That is fine. Now when the client request arrives, we created a simple runnable task and we assigned it the socket to respond to the client. And this is done through executor service with a fixed thread pool of size 5. That means uh, we created a thread pool of size 5 and we started servicing the clients using that pool. Now when, when this task gets a chance to service the client, it actually requests the request handler to handle this request. And here is the code. Now it actually opens the output stream. It gets what is the request. And from within that request, it extracts what is the URI which are they are requesting. And it is trying to get the resource for the given URI. And this get resource actually uses the slash resources folder 
and it tries to see if the resource is available and gets it in the form of the input stream. Now, if the resource is not found, we are sending the resource not found response. If the resource is found, we are sending the successful response. Now, in case of successful response, we are sending the response code as 200. And in the response body, we are copying the entire file content. Now, if the resource is not found, we are sending the proper response code indicating that the resource is not found. And in case of any error, we are sending that it, there is an internal server error. You can go through this utility on your own and understand what I am doing hit here. And this is not an extraordinary example, but still it's a fair example to enable you to understand how the resources are sent back to the client. Now, let us start the server. Now we are waiting for the client. Let's go to the browser application and see request for a.txt. As you can see that the browser, the server application has responded with the file a.txt. It's fine. Now when I say b.txt, as you can see the browser has responded with the file b.txt. When I say index.html, these are the three files available and it actually responded with the index space. And let's say, let's now refer to some non-existing file. I can see server has actually responded with the status code 404 where the resource is not found. Now this is a sample application. Now this actually demonstrates how a particular request could be serviced uh, by the server. And uh, using this example, you can visualize how a server is going to respond to the client requests.